Suddenly, my room was lit up with a light which looked like fire. Immediately, my fear vanished, and I saw angels descending and walking in my room. I could hear them clearly speaking to each other, and suddenly a marvelous being appeared, more marvelous than the angels. He was dressed in white with a golden sash. On his chest was written in gold, faithful and true. His face was showing gentleness and love. Jesus, the Christ, was in front of me, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Blessed be his holy name. Jesus approached me, touched my head, and told me, I am Jesus, who died for you. Look at these marks in my hands. They are still there for you. I came down from my throne of glory to speak to you. There are many things in your life to put right. You are lazy and quick-tempered. Moreover, I do not want 25% Christian, nor 95% Christian, but 100% Christian. If you want to go to heaven, you have to be holy, as I myself am holy. I came to take you for a journey. I asked him, Lord, is it a missionary journey? He answered, No. Then he took me by my hands and lifted me up and talked to me with simplicity and love. He brought me as far as my windows. He looked at the city of New York and I saw sadness on his face. He wept and said, My word is well preached, but people do not listen. The sin of the city has reached my father. The city was full of homosexuals, among them were politicians. The Lord told me, It's another Sodom, but I am alive, and the judgments of my father will soon fall on this city. Then I knelt before the Lord while crying, and he told me, Do not be afraid. When judgment falls on this world, my church will no longer be on the earth. The Lord told me again, I who give life, I take your spirit, but you will come back and tell the peoples to trust me fully. The one who believes in me will never die. He stretched his hands, and I saw that another body came out of me. I was dressed in white, and I was shining like the Lord. He told me, Look, this is the body that Christians who obey my word will soon have. I realized that I could go through walls. The Lord who was holding me by my hand said, Look, when I turned, I saw my body without spirit. He explained to me that my physical body was worthless. It is nothing but dust, and at death it will become dust again, as any physical body. He added that the new body that I had was a glorious one, which is the spirit he gave to man. I thought he would lead me straight to heaven, but it was not the case. We descended through a tunnel below the earth, and when approaching a certain place, I could perceive an unbearable smell. I said, Lord, I don't want to go into that place. But we went in. That place was dark and not worth living. I heard people suffering, weeping, and screaming. When we got to the end of the tunnel, we sat on a rock, and the Lord told me, Look, I saw people suffering. In hell, people spend their time crying, and no one cares about others. Dear brothers and sisters, I just came to realize that hell is real. I wept and wept, and when I looked at the Lord, he told me, Hold on to what you have seen, and do not forget it. I was looking at hell, and people were screaming, Ouch! Ouch! It's forever! It's forever! Pain and hatred forever! Then the Lord showed me thousands of people who were suffering in hell, and he told me, You see, some of these people knew me when they were on the earth. There are still a lot of people on earth who walk on the street without knowing where they go. Know that the way to heaven is very narrow, and it will be even narrower still. There will be difficulties on earth, so that you will be as pure as gold, but fear not, for I am ahead of you like a mighty warrior. I asked him, Are these Christians in hell? He answered, Yes, do you know why? They believed in me, but they did not walk according to my word. There are many, those Christians who only behave well when they're in the temple, in front of their pastors and their family, but they're greatly deceiving themselves. The eyes of my Father see everything, and he understands every word, wherever you are. Tell my people that it's time they lived a holy life before my Father, before the devil, and before the world.
Let the devil have no right to accuse my people, and let the world not point the finger at my people. It is high time that we sought holiness and consecration. Then we went somewhere where there was a lake of fire. As we were approaching the lake, I perceived a very bad smell, and the Lord told me, What you see there is a lake of fire, which is already prepared for the devil, the false prophet, and the Antichrist. I did not prepare this place for men, but all those who do not believe in me as their Savior, and all those who do not live according to my word will go there. At that moment, I saw Jesus weeping, and he told me again, There are too many those who are lost than those to, who go to heaven. Then Jesus showed me the number of people who were dying in a minute, and he told me, Look, look how many are lost. My church is sleeping despite the fact that she has received my power. She has my word and the Holy Spirit, but she is sleeping. On earth there are people who preach that hell doesn't exist. Go and tell them that this place is real. I was very far from that place, but I could feel the heat. We left the Hades and went to heaven. We kept on going and went to the second heaven. In that heaven, the Lord showed me the sun and the stars, and he told me, Look at these stars. I call each of them by its name. Do you see the sun? It's by my power that it shines both on the righteous and the wicked. But there will come a day when the sun will no longer shine and everything will be darkness. We went further and reached the heaven where God lives. There were beautiful houses there. The walls of these houses were very high of pure gold and of precious stones. There were twelve gates of pearl with twelve angels at the gates. I thought I couldn't go in, but the Lord looked at me and said, Do you want to go in? Oh, yes, Lord, I really want to. Then get in, for I myself am the door. At that moment, I went in through a precious gate, and I saw a garden of magnificent flowers. Do you want to go in the garden? Then go in, for I prepared this for you and my people. I stepped in, and I started to pick some flowers and to arrange some bunches. As I was running in the garden like a little girl, the flowers I picked had many colors with a very nice smell. After that, the Lord called someone. It was an angel, strong and so beautiful that I couldn't even describe it to you. The Lord told me, Do you see this one? He is the archangel Michael. He is the one who leads my army. Look again. I saw a mighty army on horses, and the Lord told me, It's not a human army, but my father's. This army is at the disposal of Christians who are really born again. Do not fear, for it is more powerful than the one which is in the world. Then he showed me another angel. This one is the messenger of Christians who obey my word. I was happy to hear that. Jesus told me, Pay attention. I am the God of Abraham, the God of Moses, the God of Elijah, the one who caused fire to fall down from heaven. I have not changed. I am going to show you the condition in which my people live in these last days they've got left. The Lord told me, Be very careful about the things I'm going to show you. I saw Christians who were weak and tired. The Lord asked me this question, Do you believe that I can take this church away in its present state? Then he told me, Christians that I will take away with me will be glorious, triumphant, spotless, blameless. Among my people there are lies, lack of love. My people are divided. I showed you the condition of Christians in these last days. Now I'm going to show you how the early church lived. Those brothers and sisters were filled with the glory of God. They constantly fasted and prayed. They preached my word without any fear. Whereas present Christians think that I've changed, they also think that the Holy Spirit has changed. The big mistake of Christians today is the fact that they live a routine life, planned by humans. Therefore, they've forgotten that the messages are from the Holy Spirit and from above. Tell my servants, the pastors, that the time has come to put behind those routine programs. If they do, you will see the power of God in your midst, the Holy Spirit who is manifest in the early church. He will perform signs and miracles and wonders in great numbers, causing the dead to rise. The Holy Spirit is still the same. It's you who have changed. Christians, it's high time that you came back to the life of the early church. 
I then left this beautiful garden and went to the lovely street of gold, and the Lord told me, Touch! Yes, it's pure gold. Go and tell my children that very soon they're going to walk on these streets of gold by the hand of the one who gives life. Oh, how great it is to walk in those streets of gold. After that, I saw a splendid throne surrounded by angels, archangels, and seraphs. They were continually praising God, the one who was on the throne, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Heaven and earth are filled with his glory. Amen. Time has come to lift up holy hands unto me and to praise me. At the same time, I saw the river of the water of life flowing from the throne. I also saw the tree of life, and at the other end I saw the rainbow and the river of crystal. Then I asked the Lord, Who is on this throne? He answered, It's my Father, the Lord of hosts. I told him, Can I see the Father? No, it's not yet time, the Lord answered. Even though I did not see the Father, the one who was on the throne was mighty. I saw thunder and flashes of lightning coming from the throne, and I heard praises. Jesus told me, Do you hear these praises? These are the praises of those who are redeemed. I saw seven angels, each one of them holding a golden bowl, and seven other angels, each holding a trumpet. Lord, who are these angels? The Lord answered, The seven bowls that the angels hold are filled with the wrath of God. They will soon be poured out, and when the trumpets sound, my church, those Christians who live according to the will of my Father, will be caught up. They will no longer be on earth during the great tribulation. Before the Antichrist manifests himself, this man of sin, my church will hear the last trumpet sound, and they will meet me in the air. I was there, dear friend, in front of a great throne, and I did not have any notion of time. A moment later, Jesus showed me how his church, the true believers, will be caught up. I saw this in vision, thousands of people disappearing. This happened worldwide, and TV and radio gave the news of the disappearance. Newspapers with big headlines in red also brought out the news. The Lord told me, the news will soon happen. If the judgments of my Father have not yet come upon the earth, it's because of the faithful Christians who really love me. After that, I saw the appearance of the man of sin. He was saying to the inhabitants of the earth, I'm bringing you peace and safety. And immediately people forgot the event that had just taken place. Jesus told me, Look carefully. I saw in the vision the seven angels with the seven bowls. Dear friend, what was happening was difficult to describe. I saw the angels pouring out the seven bowls of wrath on the earth. Trumpets started sounding. God was pouring out his judgments on the inhabitants of the earth, and the whole country and whole countries disappeared. The Lord told me, Look, all these people were part of my church, and some were even pastors. Because I did not fully understand this, I asked the Lord, How is it that your people have been left so numerous in the Great Tribulation? How is it that there are also pastors among them, those who preach your word? Jesus answered, Yes, they had preached my word, but they were not living in accordance with my word. Then the Lord allowed me to see another multitude of pastors, he told me. Those pastors were not preaching my word as it is written. They thought that my word was not adapted to their century. They had too much favor towards those who were given a lot of tithes because they were more interested in material prosperity. Go and tell my servants that I am the one who called them, and that silver and gold belong to me, and I give them according to my greatness and glory. Tell them to preach my word as it is written. There are many, there are many, those who give another interpretation to my word. My word is my word, and no one can change it. It must be preached as it is written. There are many among my people who distort my word for their own profit. After that, we entered a lounge in that new Jerusalem, and the Lord told me, What you see is paradise. The Lord called a very beautiful woman with an unspeakable, unspeakable beauty, like all those I saw there, and he told me, This is Mary. Go and tell everyone that Mary is not the Queen of Heaven. The King of Heaven is I, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the one who says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Go and tell this blindfolded generation that there is no purgatory, for if there was one, I would have shown you. Instead, there's a hell. 
the lake of fire, the precious Jerusalem, and the paradise which I showed you. But tell them that there is no purgatory. Tell them that it's a lie from the devil and there is no purgatory.